Hey there, my name is Matthias Erhardt and I'm from the University of Bath in UK and I would like to tell you about our paper on structure preserving deep learning that we recently published in the European Journal of Applied Mathematics. So what are neural networks and what is deep learning? So for us, a neural network is a parametric function here denoted by phi theta that maps some initial state x uh, to an output zk and uh, these zk's are defined recursively so for each of the layers of the neural network we take the the current state zk and we take uh, uh, parameters uh, theta k and uh, sort of like insert them both into the functions fk to get the next state so each of the fk's we call a layer um, so like this neural network now here has uh, has uh, k layers and uh, classically, the layers have the following structure here, where um, we look at, uh, we, we take the input Z and look at the affine combination uh, AZ plus B. And uh, this affine combination is then being inserted into a nonlinear function sigma, which acts component wise and um, is often chosen to be something like the ReLU, Hyperbola tangent, um, and so there are many choices. And in imaging applications, um, these matrices A, they often have a convolutional structure. And for each of the layers, usually like A and B are the parameters that we then learn. And uh, how do we learn these? So the, so the training goal in deep learning uh, is usually you have uh, you have a large set of paired data x and y n, and we try to map x n to y n um, in our neural network, um, and we do so by minimizing the following objective. So first of all, for each of the of the training uh, data points, like on average, we want that uh, we map x n very closely to y n. And in addition, we also may want to penalize certain parameters, um, like depending on what the parameters are and so on. So deep learning has had great successes in many areas like playing games, autonomous driving, in healthcare, recently also in um, understanding human biology and so on. But over the years, or like very often, a fundamental issue is coming up that many kind of neural network architectures that have been learned, they seem to be instable and instable with respect to various kind of deformations. So here are two examples from image classification. So here's an image on the left uh, that has been correctly classified as a panda, but now one's able to find uh, some very small noise, such as we humans, we can't even see it in the image. So here the image on the right is the sum of these, of these two. So we can't even see the noise, but nevertheless, the neural network could be fooled in classifying this one now as a gibbon instead of a panda, which it clearly isn't, right? And so we humans can't be fooled by this, but neural, some neural networks can. Likewise, here at the bottom, there's another example in uh, image classification. And uh, uh, so here, uh, the classification completely changes by just like rotating and translating the image ever so slightly. So for us humans, there's hardly a difference, but then the neural network now uh, got the classification completely wrong. Classically, these type of problems, they're being tackled via what's so called data augmentation, which means that we transform the input data, which for instance, kind of like adding noise to it or rotating it in a certain way. And we then uh, demand that the output of these transformed data points is still the correct data point. So we kind of empirically try to enforce robustness this way. In this paper, we take a very different approach. And so we want to design deep learning architectures with mathematical guarantees. So which are guaranteed to be stable, which are guaranteed to be equi or invariant, uh, which may be invertible or where the output may lie on manifolds and so on, such that these problems that I outlined a second ago, they can't happen anymore and they're guaranteed not to happen. Okay, so the starting point um, of, this, uh, of this paper is the following observation. So um, there are many deep learning architectures. So like um, I was talking about kind of the standard feedforward neural network a second ago, but also about six years ago, um, 
they proposed uh, um, what's it called a ResNet, and a special case of the ResNet is being shown here. And for a mathematician, especially for a numerical analyst, uh, when looking at a formula like this, then this looks very familiar because this is nothing else than the forward Euler discretization of uh, the following continuous ODE when we sample our continuous variable Z um, at certain time points uh, uh, K, um, where sort of like these are like multiples, for instance, of a certain time stepping. So making this connection now uh, allows us to think about uh, neural networks as a flow rather than just some arbitrary uh, mathematical computation. Um, so here are two examples um, of, for image classification. So, uh, so here at the, at the top row, we have the half moon data set where each of the half moons, they're supposed to be classified. Um, they're, they're like two different classes, right? So like this, this red half moon and the blue half moon, they're two different classes. And so here now in the beginning, we try to linearly classify them and this fails completely. But now we now train parameters of the neural network, such as we transform the half moon into something that we can actually can linearly classify. So here, this K is the index. Um, so either you can think about it as, as a time when fl flowing through uh, through the open, propagating through the ODE, or you can think about it as the layer of the new network. And so here we have a new network with 40 layers. And we can see that uh, as the data propagates through the networks, the data becomes more and more linearly classifiable such that in the end, we can very nicely separate these two uh, classes by a hyperplane, no problem. The same is true here at the bottom for this donut data set, where so like we have some folding going on and we kind of like change the topology in a certain way, such that like in the end, we can actually classify the data very nicely linear. So what I've been now saying is that we can relate now uh, discrete deep learning architectures with, uh, with a continuous uh, deep learning architecture, which is like nothing else than an ODE, which also means that we now can formulate a continuous deep learning problem, which is nothing else than an optimal control problem. So we want to minimize our, uh, our objective. So we want to have that, uh, that the output, uh, like the final time point of these uh, trajectories, which follow a certain ODE, they should be as close as possible to our data yn, where the input of these trajectories are our data xn. So what's the benefit of making this connection between discrete deep learning and a continuous version of deep learning? So first of all, it's very concise. So we can now uh, phrase the deep learning problem very neatly in two lines. Second, the continuous formulation can be used to create new deep learning architecture, for instance, by discretizing the continuous problem in different ways. Thirdly, uh, continuous models are, use, uh, are, often, <clears throat> are often useful simplifications of reality and are amendable to mathematical analysis. So we actually can like, study and understand the continuous problem and thereby deriving new insights for the discrete problem as well. Of course, special attention needs to be given to what of the uh, ODE or optimal control properties do actually carry over to the discretized system. This is a very important question as well. So the takeaway messages are the following. So first of all, we can relate deep learning and neural networks to continuum modeling which opens the toolbox of many, many mathematical and numerical analysis techniques. Second, by making the connection of deep learning to, uh, we can make the connection of deep learning to many, many fields such as ODEs and optimal control as I showed you today, but we can also make the connection, for instance, to group theory, something that maybe on the first glance seems quite far apart. Um, this continuum modeling also allows us to design new neural network architectures which have a certain structure and which are guaranteed to have a certain structure, such as stability, equivariance, invariance, invertibility, or for instance, that the data should lie on manifolds. And as we will outline in the paper, there are many, many, many open questions uh, for mathematicians 
to kind of like help in advancing the field of deep learning. Many of this we outline in our paper. So with this, I, I stop here and um, yeah, have fun reading our paper and uh, let us know if you have any questions. Bye-bye.